In this Easy Ed video lecture, we will take a look at forces in space, wherein we are going to learn about classification of space force systems and analysis of concurrent space force system, parallel space force system and general space force system. Hey, it's time to concentrate now. Space force systems can be classified as follows. In a concurrent space force system, all forces meet at one point, but their lines of action do not lie on the same plane. In a parallel space force system, the forces do not meet at one point, and their lines of action do not lie on the same plane, but are parallel to each other. In a non-concurrent general space force system, all forces do not meet at one point, and their lines of action are neither parallel to each other, nor do they lie on the same plane. Let us now consider a concurrent space force system without couple. In such a system, the resultant is a force acting through the point of concurrence of the given forces. The x, y and z components of the resultant are calculated using summation of all forces among all three directions respectively. Hence, we can find the resultant using the formula shown along. The direction of resultant can be represented by the three angles with coordinate axis theta x, theta y and theta z given by the formulae. The conditions of equilibrium of a concurrent force system are as follows. Summation of all forces along all directions should be equal to zero. Consider the problem shown alongside. Three cables AB, AC and AD hold a balloon as shown. Calculate the vertical force exerted at the base of the balloon, A. Knowing that tension in cable AB is 300 newtons. This is an ideal case of a concurrent space force system in equilibrium. The required coordinates of the points AB, C and D are given. Let the magnitude of force at A B P, then P bar is equal to P into J hat. We will now express the tension forces in the cables in vector form. For T A B bar, as we know the magnitude of the force and the coordinates of two points on the line of action of the force, the vector form will be as follows. Similarly, as we know the coordinates of two points on the lines of action of the other two forces, we can represent them in the vector form in terms of their magnitude respectively. Since this system is in a state of equilibrium, we will now apply the conditions of equilibrium. We will first equate the summation of all forces along the x direction to zero. On simplifying, we find tension in cable AC equal to 622.34 newtons. Next on equating summation of all forces in z direction to zero, we find tension in cable AD equal to 744.37 newtons. Similarly, when we equate summation of all forces in the y direction to zero, we get the vertical force exerted at the base of the balloon, that is P equals 1414.43 newtons. Let us now consider a parallel space force system. For such a system, the resultant is a force parallel to the given force system. The resultant can be calculated by using summation of all forces along the axis parallel to the forces. The position of the resultant force is found using Wagner's theorem about two different axes perpendicular to the plane of the force. To analyze a parallel force system in equilibrium, we first equate summation of all forces along an axis parallel to the forces to zero. Also the summation of moments of all forces should be equal to zero about both the axis perpendicular to the plane of the forces. Let us now consider this problem. The figure below shows a regular octagon A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H of side 3 meters. There are six columns which carry vertical forces normal to the plane of octagon while acting at its six corner points. Locate the resultant of these forces with respect to the centroid of octagon O. Consider the top view shown below. 
since all the forces are acting in the z direction the component of the resultant in the x and y direction will be equal to zero hence in order to find the resultant we should find the summation of all forces in the z direction on simplifying we find it to be minus 1400 newtons hence the resultant has a magnitude of 1400 newtons and acts in the negative z direction next we will find the location of the resultant let the resultant act at the point i x y as shown the location of the resultant force is found using Wagner's theorem about two different axes perpendicular to the plane of the forces hence we will apply Wagner's theorem along both the axis x and the y axis we will first solve about the y axis on substituting the values of the forces and their moment arms and further simplifying we find x is equal to minus 0 0.16 meters similarly on using the Wagner's theorem about the x axis we find y is equal to minus 0 0.03 meters now we will consider the non-concurrent general force system a non-concurrent general force system can be simplified into a single resultant force and a couple moment at a specified point to find the magnitude of the resultant we will first find the component of the resultant in all the three directions the magnitude and direction of the resultant force are calculated similar to a concurrent force system the resultant couple moment about the specified point can be obtained by simply adding all the couple moments about that point the conditions of equilibrium for a non-concurrent general force system are that the summation of forces in all direction should be equal to zero also the summation of moments of all the forces about any point lying on any axis should be equal to zero that is the summation of moments of all forces about any axis should be equal to zero let us consider this problem now for the general space force system shown calculate the resultant force and moment at origin we will first define the coordinates of the points a c d g and e using the lens of the sides these coordinates can be easily calculated for the five points a c d g and e next we will express all the forces in vector form we can directly express the forces f1 f2 f3 f4 and f6 in vector form as they are parallel to any one of the coordinate axis to express f5 in terms of vectors we will first find the unit vector along ca and then multiply with the magnitude thus we have expressed all the forces in the system in vector form hence the resultant of the system can be calculated by simply adding up all the forces in vector form itself on simplifying we get r bar is equal to minus 29.35 i hat plus 7.25 k hat now we will calculate the moment of each of the force about the origin we will find the moment of all the forces about the origin that is o this is calculated by taking the cross product of the magnitude of a force and the vector to represent the distance of the force from the point o this process is followed for all the forces f2 f3 f4 and f5 using the unit vectors along the three axes and then solving using the determinant we are able to calculate the moment of the forces f1 f2 f3 f4 and f5 about the point o the moment of the force f6 about the point o is equal to zero since f6 passes through the origin hence resultant moment about the point origin o can be calculated by using summation of moments of all forces about point o on simplifying we get mo is equal to minus 9.42 i hat minus 15.435 j hat plus 4.748 k hat let's take a quick review of what we've studied in this lecture 
we learnt about classifications of space force systems. In a concurrent space force system, all forces meet at one point, but their lines of action do not lie on the same plane. Then, we learn the method to find the resultant of a concurrent space force system. The x, y and z components of the resultant are calculated using summation of all forces among all the three directions respectively, and then we use these formulae to find its direction. The condition of equilibrium of a concurrent force system are as follows. Next, we learned about parallel space force systems. In a parallel space force system, the forces do not meet at one point and their lines of action do not lie on the same plane, but are parallel to each other. For such a system, the resultant is a force parallel to the given force system and can be calculated by using summation of all forces along the axis parallel to the force. The position of the resultant force is found using Wagner's theorem about the other two axes. To analyze a parallel force system in equilibrium, we first equate summation of all forces along an axis parallel to the forces to zero. Also, the summation of moments of all forces should be equal to zero about both the axes perpendicular to the plane of the forces. Then we learned about a non-concurrent general space force system. In a non-concurrent general space force system, all forces not meet at one point and their lines of action are neither parallel to each other nor do they lie on the same plane. The magnitude and direction of the resultant force are calculated similar to a concurrent force system. The resultant couple moment about the specified point can be obtained by simply adding all the couple moments about that point. The conditions of equilibrium for a non-concurrent general force system are that the summation of forces in all directions should be equal to zero. Also, the summation of moments of all the forces about any point lying on any axis should be equal to zero. That is, the summation of moments of all the forces about any axis should be equal to zero.